so the other really big method in discovering extrasolar planets is called the transit method. And the transit method is actually a lot simpler to explain. The transit method is when you have your star, right, when something goes in front of it, that light dims. Now, this is a much smaller example of something like an eclipse. If you've ever been to a solar eclipse, once the moon really gets in front of the sun, it gets dark right? It gets really, really dark really fast, and you will notice there's a huge dimming of the light. That light is still there. The sun is still on. It's still doing its thing. It's just that the moon is blocking it out. Well, this actually happens when tiny bodies pass in front of the sun, too. So if you could actually collect the sun's rays and say, this is how much light the sun is putting out, and you saw the transit of Venus or Mercury, and you could take that and you could look, okay, the light, now this is how much light we're getting now. You could see that the light had dimmed. So I know that sounds kind of crazy and how would you even do that, but it's totally possible. So that's what we're looking for is we're looking for this dimming. We're looking for a body to go in front of that primary body, that star, and dim some of that light. Now anything could dim that light, right? So you could have some faraway body, but something like, let's say, still in the solar system, let's say Pluto is way out there and it just kind of passes in front of the camera and there's a background star. How do we know that it's not an asteroid or a Kuiper Belt object or a comet or something that's much, much closer to us, something that's not a planet going around a star in another solar system? Well, the answer lies just like with the radial velocity method in this dependable period. So if you see a star dim and you just see it dim once, well, maybe something passed in front of it, you know, comet, Pluto, alien spaceship, we don't know. But if you see it dimming periodically, if you have these regular intervals, these regular periods, if every six months the star dims, or every eight months the star dims, or every 127 days the star dims, you know that there's something that is going around it because there's no other natural phenomenon to really explain that. We don't have the same comet going back and forth in front of the star, right? There's a distant star, there's a comet, and it's just like, I'm going this way, now I'm going this way, now I'm going every six months. No, that doesn't happen, right? We don't see that happening ever because comets don't just like change their mind. They have trajectories, they have regular orbits. So what we're looking for is a very regular period. If you see this regular period of dimming, you know that there's going to be something going around that star. So that is the transit method and that's another common way that astronomers look for extrasolar planets. It's good to be a geek. It's good to